So, hi everybody and uh, welcome to our presentation about Project Eileen. I'm Annabelle. And uh, I'm Louise. And we're going to start off by just showing you a little video of, uh, with a synopsis really, of what we are up to. We don't just exist, we are the essence. Don't care what we've missed, don't care for lessons We don't just exist, we are the essence We got 10 out of 10 For non-attendance And 100% For independence Hi, so as you are attending Lifting the Lid, it's highly likely you're very aware of and most probably completely agree there's a need to be able to talk about death and dying freely. At Project Tiding, we commissioned a survey of UK parents in October of this year and discovered that the majority felt schools are not doing enough to, to prepare young people for real life events and over half demanded schools should cover death, bereavement and grief as part of the curriculum. We found a project titan to help young people in the UK secondary school tackle the topics of death and grief. We offer a multimedia programme to give teenagers the tools and life skills to help themselves and others now and in their future lives. So what impact will this have? Well, first, it will raise an awareness. Simply by normalising the topic of death, teenagers will find themselves in a better position to deal with any loss they will one day encounter, very often unexpectedly. Secondly, it will address the stigma around the subject. For those who have not yet encountered death in their lives, they'll discover ways to respond to their friends who have been bereaved already. This knowledge they gain from participating in the programme during school will enable them as adults to be in a position to offer support to, to their colleagues, their friends um, and relatives. Thirdly, by encouraging peer support, our programme aims to help combat the isolation and loneliness that people who have suffered bereavement very often feel. Fourthly, by opening up the discussion and showing young people the benefits of talking and importantly, letting them know where they can find help if they need it. Our tools, which we hope will go a long way towards reducing the development of mental health issues and complications. In the British Medical Journal, a consultant psychiatrist, Colin Murray Parks wrote that 
following major loss, such as the death of a spouse or a child, um, up to a third of those most directly impacted will suffer detrimental effects to their physical or mental health. He states that such bereavements increase the risk of death from heart disease and suicide, as well as causing or contributing to a variety of mental health issues. So this is how we feel we're going to help. So fifthly, what impact will it have? Fifthly, resilience. We know the importance of resilience in life. When faced with the challenges of bereavement or supporting a friend who has been bereaved, we hope Project Eileen will both increase young people's capacity to adapt in challenging circumstances and to help build emotional resilience. And sixthly, the programme will go a long way to boosting creativity in young people. In the sixth, sixth lesson programme, the first lesson is devoted to the story Eileen about a group of teenagers and how they and their school community deal with the death of a friend. Schools can either choose to use our animated recorded version, you saw a little sample of uh, that a moment ago, um, and they can use that uh, for their first lesson, which Annabelle is about to explain, or they can opt for the creative version where the opportunities are vast because um, with a choice of scripts to act or narrate and a variety of musical scores composed by Alex D. Hay, which are suitable for a whole range of instruments from keyboard to guitar through to drums and trumpet and saxophone, and there's no end of, to the possibilities. Um, so, so all this can be done alongside the interactive version of the animation, which has buttons for students to operate. So there's a recorded version and um, an interactive creative version. Schools can choose to create their own presentation with the creative version, or they can choose to have one of our workshop facilitators come into to school um, to work with the students for a day. Um, to balance the constant decline of arts education in schools, our creative version gives young people the potential to benefit from all the restorative qualities creativity can bring to both mental and physical health. The participation and connectedness of being involved in, 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 in the programme, can, can uh, the creative version, can help boost young people's mental health by, by reducing anxiety, depression and reducing stress. So team building skills are developed and negative preconceptions can, can be challenged through safe and supportive creative tasks. While at the same time, speaking and listening skills are significantly enhanced. So importantly, a community spirit is encouraged by giving young people the power to work and create something together. So in November, 2019, the World Health Organization report identified a major role for the arts in the prevention of ill health, the promotion of health and management and treatment of illness across the lifespan. And it states, this report, that the beneficial impact of the arts could be furthered through acknowledging and acting on the growing evidence base, promoting arts engagement at the individual, the local and national levels, and supporting cross-sectoral collaboration. So, now we're going to watch a very short um, uh, video to show the um, what is contained in the program, uh, if, if you were to, to have it in your school. And then I'm gonna hand over to Annabelle after that to explain.
this on the screen that you're seeing now is a quotation from a boy who completed the Project Eileen program earlier this year. And he said, just wanted to say that the project we're doing in PD at the moment is really helping me. And I would like to thank you for setting it up. I'm sure it's also helpful for many others. And I think it is a really important topic to discuss and know lots of students are appreciating the advice, especially with how to talk to those going through the grieving process. So comments like that and the extremely positive feedback that we've had from teachers who have taught the programme um, demonstrate a clear need to tackle the subject of death and grief in schools. We've had two local schools who ran a pilot of the programme and as a result have made it a permanent part of their curriculum. So um, on here um, is uh, a breakdown of the, the different topics that we're covering in the lessons. And I'd like to give you a better idea of what students will learn when they participate and some examples also of the activities they'll do. So um, wherever possible, the activities and the lessons are linked to the story. So students don't feel they have to talk about their personal experience or feel they can't comment because they haven't experienced bereavement themselves. And the comprehensive lesson plans um, are divided into clear sections, as you can see, and they're fully adaptable with additional material to extend lessons if time is available, but which can be left out. And then at each stage, organisations which provide help, advice and even counselling for those people who are dealing with death and bereavement are signposted, which we feel is incredibly important. So before starting the programme, students are asked to complete this short confidence scale, and this serves to both focus them on the topic that is to come and when revisited at the end of the programme will clearly demonstrate progress made. And as you can see here, um, they're just asked um, four short questions, but it gets them to think about whether they're confident about talking about the topic in general, um, what emotions people might feel, what maybe, you know, do they are they aware of the right thing to say to someone? Are they aware of how to help people? So we get them to answer that at the beginning and the end, as I've said. Now, um, in lesson one, if schools have chosen the recorded version of the programme, the experience begins with the film Eileen, which was animated by Nina Feifenberger and narrated by Sir Tony Robinson. Sir Tony Robinson, best known for his role as uh, Baldrick in Blackadder, Time Team, Time Team, and even his recent documentaries. And he very kindly volunteered his time and expertise to us, despite his incredibly busy schedule. And you can see some photographs that uh, that I took on the day that he uh, did the recording. Um, and I think you can see in this first one, he's there in the recording booth. So um, the film soundtrack is also made up of original Scar songs. Uh, the two-tone ska movement of the 70s and 80s, uniting black and white and promoting racial integration was a major influence in the film's music style and it aims to appeal to a, a diverse multicultural audience. So having watched the video um, or the, the film of the story in the first lesson, lesson two, the language of death and grief, focuses largely on the language and vocabulary students need to discuss the topic particularly when describing feelings and emotions. We encourage students not to fear using words such as died, dead or death. People still go out of their way to avoid using such words and that can actually perpetuate the stigma and fear around the subject that we're really trying to address. So here is um, a slide of one of the activities which elicits the words for emotions that the students already know. Um, and as you can see at the top that they're um, using the feelings of the characters in the story um, that they've experienced during that story. And then we look at expanding the emotions with the chance to discuss the words that have been included. And then students could even create their own vocabulary of grief. In lesson three, grief in the grieving process, we dive further into what grief is and how everyone reacts differently. Students learn what signs to look out for if someone needs additional help to cope with their grief. We also look at other reasons that could trigger a grief reaction. In this slide, we look at the theory about how the experiences we have over time enable us to cope better with grief, which does not disappear, but becomes increasingly manageable. This theory, originally introduced by Dr. Lois Tonkin, challenges the theory that grief will diminish with time, which is considered more in line with reality, as you can see from the diagram. So the size of the grief stays the same, but life grows around it. 
more time and experience elapses between you and the occurrence of the death, so grief eventually becomes integrated into your life. Lesson four, help through the grieving process, focus, focuses on practical methods to cope with grief, how to help others and how and where to ask for help. Our aim is to enable people to develop resilience by being able to navigate their way through grief. And then students are given lots of suggestions of ways they could help themselves and others when grieving. And this activity shown on the slide here um, is one where they're encouraged to create a sort of emotional first aid kit with ideas that they've come across which would work for them for themselves. And then I've got some examples here of some of those emotional first aid kits that students who've been through the programme um, have actually made. Lesson five, funerals and what needs to be done when someone dies, teaches how funerals can help bereave people and what to expect if you've not been to one and how to prepare for one. The effects of COVID-19 on funerals and the huge impact the situation is having on how we grieve is also included. In addition, as young people often want more practical information on how to, um, practical information that they can take into adulthood, um, material has also been included on things that need to be done when someone dies and when organising a funeral. As with all the lessons, the key information that needs to be covered is highlighted and other material like this will be included at the discretion of the teacher. The starting point of this lesson is to revisit the funeral scene from Eileen. Answering the comprehension questions here will lead students to consider how funerals help people cope with the death of a loved one. And then the following slide is one from, as we talked about, the more practical aspects. Um, and the students will pick up pointers on what needs to be done when someone dies, as you can see listed here. And they also, as part of this section of the lesson, introduced to the vocabulary that they would need to know, which they may not have come across before, such as words like probate, executor, that kind of thing. And then in the final lesson, lesson six, historical, religious and cultural comparisons and the way we talk about death. Students explore how death was talked about in the past and nowadays in different cultures and religions. And they'll be encouraged to consider what we can learn from these beliefs, customs and traditions. And then uh, this slide example from the lessons shows a matching exercise that could be done having discussed some of the customs adopted by these religions. Alternatively, the pictures themselves could be used as a starting point for discussion. And this section of the programme could be used as the basis for cross-curricular work with subjects such as history or religious studies. So you could incorporate the topic um, within the school, for example, if that's something the school would be interested in. So accessing the materials is easy. Um, interested schools can register on our website www.projectdialing.co.uk, as you can see from the screen, um, and they would be able to download all the resources. And then, although not strictly a paid resource, we are a charity and we're asking schools to contribute according to what their budgets would allow. It's taken several years for Project Eileen to reach this point, and we rely on funding to enable us to continue all our charitable activities, which include support for the schools using our programme, and obviously the continued development and delivery of the programme's materials and resources. So here we have our album cover because we have only just released our uh, soundtrack album. So you heard a snippet of the music, but there are tracks from the um, Eileen film and you can either buy just one or you can buy the album and you can you can listen first. I don't know if you're familiar with Bandcamp, but if you if, if you head over there, uh, you, you, you'll, you'll discover what it's all about. We're quite excited because we've already been discovered by the Windy City Sound System radio show and, they, and they've played our music and um, and it's great. So follow us on Bandcamp too. OK, so to summarise our project, Eileen. We offer a programme for UK secondary schools to advance the education of teenagers between 13 and 15 and the wider school community about death and grief, supporting positive mental health and helping teachers and schools manage difficult and sensitive situations. Please remember to follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and as you've seen, Bandcamp. 
And please encourage your local schools to register on our website, as we said before, www.projecteileen.co.uk. And uh, thank you very much for listening. And now we are open to any questions that anyone might like to ask. Um, one earlier question we I noticed on the chat was that the, the report was from the World Health Organization says so November 2019. I mean, one of the things we might talk about, one of the things that we've been asked is why we choose the particular age group that we've chosen, the 13 to 15 year olds. And um, we, you know, we strongly believe, I think there are other people talking um, at the event about talking about death with um, with children, younger children, and we feel that is incredibly important. But where we're coming in is when young people are old enough to um, discuss strategies that they can then take on into their life. You know, the whole point about Project Eileen is teaching a life skill. You know, it's something that we are all going to come across in our lives at some point. And we need to, to know and have the security that we know that we will be able to handle it, that we can learn how to help other people and the things that we might be able to do. And that there are things that we can do um, to look after ourselves when that happens. And we've, and we've um, researched into it and that age group, you know, the young people are starting to really want to talk about the topic. They want to discuss things. They know their own mind. Um, and, and they're pulling away from, from relying on their parents mm. so much. So they, 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 you know, so, so it's peer support. And, and, and this is this is where the discussion can open up amongst them, themselves. How, how was it with the sort of, because you know, like sometimes when things like sex education are introduced into schools, there's sometimes you get opposition from sort of mm. some parents that don't, just don't want that talked about. Has that been a similar thing at all? I mean, just... On Sorry, on the um, on the when when a school registers, they the, the school will get all sorts of um, information, and one of the things that they get is a letter, a template of a letter to send out to parents. So schools that have used the program already have sent out that letter and have, have in fact received tremendous response from okay. from parents going, yes, we would really like this. It's so good. Why hasn't it been around? So so. Um, uh, we've been sent samples of emails that parents have been sending into the school. So up to this point, nobody said that they they don't want to discuss it, or they that's great. It's a sensitive issue. So so so. But we do highlight with the schools that it's yeah. really important to you know um, signpost to the the parents that this is the topic that's coming up. Mm -hmm. Also to make sure that the parents you know, um, let the school know that because funnily enough, there are situations where students are actually bereaved and the school doesn't necessarily know about it. So the schools mm -hmm. need to invite parents to kind of say, you know, your, is your child going to be sensitive to this topic and to make sure the yeah. school's set up somewhere that if they don't want to participate in the lesson or they need to leave, that there's always somewhere that they can go. A safe mm -hmm. space. Yeah, because I, I mean, I can remember when the only one I remember was when my grandfather died and he died quite suddenly and I did remember just sort of suddenly being in school the next week and sort of thinking or oh, oh he's he's not here anymore but not really having the, the skills to know how to talk to anyone about it as a, a child I was younger than it was more of a sort of 11 year old or so but yeah mm -hmm. it's, it's important that there's also also the school um knows so that you know that you can they can look out for the signs, I would think, for... Yeah, yeah, someone, yeah. yeah absolutely. Because this, this, is, this is really creating an awareness because it is groundbreaking in the fact that although schools um, are there for children who have been bereaved, should they, they mm -hmm. be informed like any of us if they don't always know, but um, no one's prepared, no, no, you know, not in our generation or, or anyone up until this point, in fact. There isn't an adult from 18 up now who's had had this or, or something like this in schools. That's it. And the other thing is that, you know, there are now um, organisations um, that are, will go into school and, and, and show teachers how they can help that particular bereaved child. Mm -hmm. And there are things mm -hmm. in place, but there's nothing to actually teach them how to help themselves. So we're kind yeah. of taking it to a different level. So we're not advocating you know helping schools deal with a specific bereaved child but we, yeah. what we are doing yeah. is, is is giving the students the knowledge that they need yeah definitely um, Sybil's saying have the teachers responded positively too they have yes they 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 really have I mean I think they're quite grateful to have something 
that they can use to teach um, mm. the, the the topic. So they've got something to follow. Um, and then I think there's also Rob who yes. um, he, they, they, they've even said that when they, they have been bereaved, how helpful it is for them to be able to kind of sort of feel it, share it, understand it more. Mm. The, the teacher mm. was, was very specific about how, how it had helped him following the death of his mother. Which had occurred actually not long before he started mm. teaching the, the material. So mm. that was really, you know, a wonderful. Mm. Yeah. yeah. It's, I mean, they don't even teach. I mean, do they, when I was at school, I can't even remember them teaching death in biology. <laughs> no, no, that's true, actually. Yeah, <laughs> no, they just, it, it, well, it's just not covered. No, biology yeah. would be the ideal spot for it, really, wouldn't it? Exactly. <laughs> I mean, you learn I mean, about birth. About you, that, you know, death these days is, is seen more as a medical failure than actually but it's something that naturally happens to us all, you know, and, and, and until we kind of accept it, yeah. that's always going to be the case, really. Because mm. mm. that's often the case why sort of, I think people that have been in this sort of more death, the death positive, you're trying to get a more positive attitude to talking about death, have found that some doctors are, some, not all, but some doctors are sort of, um, there's been some obstacles because I think that they are trained to think that they failed when someone dies, yeah. which isn't the case. I think that's often the, the case that that mm. they sort of it's it's like oh we haven't managed to fix it, it's, which is sad because it's not it's not just about and that's it's not about just someone being able to still live. It's it can be about someone. It's the right time for someone to go. I mean it's a mm. slightly exactly. off topic, but yeah, yeah. It's a hot topic, isn't it? <laughs> um, but but I mean, we 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 we've been uh, really enjoyed putting this together, and and we we we, we are because um, I know this is an international festival. Mm. Um, so right now it's a a for UK schools. However, we we had a, a sort of interest um, from a couple of other countries and people. So. It, in the future with greater funding we feel that it's it's can easily be transposed to um other languages um translated yeah. and and used and adapted to fit in in schools in different countries and obviously yeah. if they are schools that are teaching in english you know the technology nowadays same yeah. as you can have a you can have a, a board meeting with somebody in New York, you know, they can mm -hmm. they can still just download the material from the website if Definitely. they register. So, you yeah. Know. Yeah. yeah, there was I mean, we were from bringing the festival together, we were overwhelmed. There's a big I mean, obviously in the States, but there's also um, in Canada, there's a very big like there seems to be lots of people doing positive things. So I don't know mm. what. Yeah, might be. Yes, um, yes. I, I'm getting things. quite a lot of uh, following from uh, people in Canada, actually. So indeed. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, oh, goodness. Thank you, Estelle. I've just read Estelle's comment. I'm definitely going to talk about your project in my Ivory school here in Germany. Good. Wonderful. Please do. Yeah, that'd be fantastic. It's very easy as well. Infoprojectiling.co.uk. That's the email address. Well, one thing I, I, I thought that we haven't mentioned is that the style of the um, animation is specifically done um, in, in a way as if this the young people themselves have drawn it so it starts kind of like it like it like a sketchbook so the characters are, are, are retro so so young people are sort of given a chance to think about um death and grief and 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 without being it being like spider-man or something you know wham bam in your face type of stuff so it is it is it is very different um a very different style to what young people these days are used to yes they're used to all this kind of reality and realistic looking games and all the rest of it and we deliberately didn't want it to be like mm. that mm. no you know, the subject itself is enough you know and and let's kind of gently introduce the story and then start to navigate mm. through the topic and the discussions yeah and um estelle said um that um, they love your t-shirts <laughs> well, thank, thank yes. you in fact we are, yes we are to stand up no, no, and yeah. them properly. <laughs> what does everyone think? We are going to be producing some if, if people ah. are. Um, we haven't <laughs> yet, so we're, we're going to be producing them to sell if, if that's something that might interest interest anyone. Do, yeah. do if anyone wants to comment and say yay or nay, that would be 
And we're quite proud of our logo, which yeah. uh, Louise's very talented daughter designed. So we've got the, the checkerboard, which is to represent the, the uh, two-tone skull movement. We've yeah. got the, the P and the uh, E there for Project yeah. Eileen, which is also a guitar. So you get the frets oh. and the strings for the music. And wow. then yeah, if you kind of turn it over that way, you get a key <laughs> to opening up the subject. It's a key to, oh. unlock, uh, yeah, key to unlock the subject. So and the um so it was designed by jemima poffley and it was uh, graphically designed on top of that so that the original art by jemima poffley and then yasha muraban you can look him up he did the album cover design as well um uh, and graphically put this all together so mm. you, you spot spot it that's his work so and we've been incredibly lucky that you know we've had people talented people like that though who have volunteered yes <laughs> volunteered and not charged us for their time to so tony robinson yeah. i mean it was amazing watching uh you know watching him work you know professional actor there doing the narration was fantastic and lovely yeah. man i mean really acting it just in that booth it was fantastic and then trying out the odd accent you know seeing how it was going you know and how he developed mm. the the characters voices and things it was how, how did you choose how did you choose him has he I, I, so if well, i missed it in your talk has he got a, an really, affiliation with him well, to do with we him? just wanted someone who would appeal to everyone hmm. um we didn't yeah, want, they, you know, I mean, he's obviously well known and he's well known by the parents and, and, and whatever. He, his voice isn't necessarily known by the students because the other thing is, you know, if you have somebody who the students all know the voice of, they're going to get distracted by that. Mm. But he's an incredibly talented narrator. He's done a lot of work like that. So he does bring the story to life. Mm. Definitely. And he strongly supports what we're doing, which is why mm. he, he, he's a believer in in. in 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 our aims and what we're doing so, so that's yeah. why he came on board really um so so did, did um, it did, did um and sorry if you have said this but did you um, the, the the way you came to to this um as in did, did something was it a personal thing that something yes yeah, quite a lot of personal things quite <laughs> a lot of personal things you know i was i was the 16 year old at school whose mother died Okay. Uh, when she was doing her A-levels um, and then uh, a year later uh, a very close friend of mine took her own life mm. and what did you do in the 80s then you got on with your A-levels and yeah. probably enough to do that well <laughs> you know and, and then I went off to university and nothing was dealt with and you know and obviously life went on like that and then um, seven years ago um, sadly my husband died and my son was 10 at the time mm -hmm. and although obviously the school had come on a, a long way to, to being mm -hmm. helped to, to help him of course nobody else knew what to say to him he wanted you know he didn't know how to ask what he needed um he wanted school to be the safe space and and everybody kept talking about it you know and he didn't mm -hmm. know how to navigate that obviously he was a bit younger mm -hmm. so that was my experience and um Louise approached me with the original idea so what, what 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 happened was that my um, very good pal at school's parents died um, within a space of a very short time, completely separate things, and she was um, orphaned, and uh, we were teenagers, and she she and I were in a lesson together, and she just put her hand on my shoulder and said, "Oh Louise, I feel so sad." And I thought, do you know what? I don't know what to do or say about this. And it kind of stayed with me for years and years. And uh, and then when my own father died, comparatively recent, well, much more recent mm. than that, a while back, he, I thought, you know, people still don't know. I've got, I've just got to do something about this, which is yeah. about and I've known each other for for a very long time. But I just mm. said, and and she jumped at it with me so and and i'm having used you know used to be a teacher and taught a lot of, of pshe the, the personal social yeah. vocational uh material you know i just felt that my personal experience mm. i thought yeah, was needed and yeah you know i was able to to contribute by mm. writing the lesson plans and researching and yeah. you know story so we just kind of combined talents <laughs> yeah, it's, it's interesting it's always interesting to hear like how people came to it so and, and you have done it in such a brilliant way with the, the graphics as you say uh, it just seems right it just seems like i don't know it just seems sort of 
cool. I'm not cool saying the word cool, but <laughs> you know, like it can be applied to so many things. Cool, it is. It's a good yeah, word. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's just it's, it's got that sort of feel. It's got that feel of like a um, I don't know, sort of a indie film that someone might sort of quite like. But also, it's I don't know everyone else. I don't. It just yeah. It's just got really. I can't express it, but I just think it's yeah. Really Thank great. you. Well, we, well, we just want everyone to um just uh, to, to to spread the word is a really key thing actually. So more and more schools hear about us, um, and Definitely. and 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 then we can develop it more because the more schools who have it, the, the more yeah. funds we'll get, and the, and the and the more developed we can make the project pro product yeah, better and better. And develop how many schools you just need as many schools as possible to know that the resources are available so that yeah. they can use it. Use yeah, them. yeah. <laughs> it's very easy once they've discovered us. <laughs> so do you have to go round? Is that how you're spreading the words? Or you know, how are you going round schools or are you just we're about to be in several um education, uh, education press, uh, uh, you know, okay. uh, uh, sort of online press and and physical oh, amazing. Um, um and so um, people just know, yes, yeah, so they'll know. But, but it really needs to be one school going, hey, right. Or, 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 or people who, whose children are at school, they, they could parents could talk talk to the schools. Yeah. Um, and it's also remarkably difficult, though, to get into the mainstream media. You know, considering there's so much kind of thing, it, you know, it's quite hard to 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 get people to write about us at the moment so if anybody is interested in writing about us in more mainstream press to get the word out then fantastic please get in contact <laughs> I still thought that would be amazing I thought, yeah I mean it just would be the thing that especially with your the graphics and everything and just I don't know the feel of it I just would have have you have you what you've have you tried or you've just there's just I know, we're, 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 we're on the we're on the starting it's not that we haven't yeah, we haven't course, tried yeah, yeah. We, you know we, it's not we failed in this we're just no, no, we're I didn't mean that. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> we're just, just at the cost. cost. Yeah. Just getting it, yeah. getting it out there. Yeah. But thank you. I, thank I just you. meant, I just was trying to think of, because there's so many sort of, even those like, because um, I used to work before I worked as a funeral director, I used to work in sort of, as, a, as an agent um, looking after hair and makeup artists in the fashion industry. And I was just thinking of all those sort of really like, there's some really interesting magazines. I'll have to, yeah, I'll see if there's any one I think that you might, <laughs> that might be interested. I'll Fantastic! See if I've got any contacts you, yeah. You said you you worked as a funeral director. I was a funeral director now, but I used to work it for twenty years. I worked as an agent for hair and makeup artists. Well, but do you yeah. know funeral directors are really very interested? They, we've had great support from them actually. Okay. In fact, yes, one one in particular helped us a lot. Well, two in fact helped us a lot two. with that particular mm. lesson. You know, we yeah. went directly oh, okay. to them to talk about. Which are you? Can you say which ones they are? Are you able to say? The funeral directors have interest or not? No, you don't have I to. I don't know. We can. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, we'll leave that. <laughs> no, we don't need to say no. It's fine. I don't need to say no. It's, um, um, but so you, but you think, yeah, it'd be good for funeral directors to yeah. We could. That's always a good thing as well. Maybe if we could, if you had like leaflets that could be, I don't know. Yeah, we can see. If, We've it's, we're exploring so many things. We yeah. find out. We're 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 um. Really, but I just want to say thank you to Sybil because fantastic about schools in Cambridge. That be that be that sounds really wonderful. Yes. Great, thank you. Um, I think we're ready to draw to a close now. Mm -hmm. really. yeah, we are. Um, oh, thank you, thank you, Joe. Yeah, thank you. that's really great. Well, it's been wonderful. We're now looking forward to actually having a little look at the uh, festival ourselves and listening yes. to some. I've people. enjoyed some. I enjoyed yesterday. Really okay. enjoyed. Yeah, I've really. It was fantastic. Yeah. So now we can, we can spend the day and tomorrow like, relaxing, yeah. relaxing <laughs> and enjoying it. <laughs> yeah. So, so thank, thank you to everybody for uh, joining us here. Well, well done for doing it, by the way. Lifting the lid, it's really cool. So thanks for doing yeah, it. Yeah, we'll be doing it again next week. And well. thank you, everybody, for the thank yous. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're seeing more people that have it's been really here. It's really nice getting, getting thank yous. Uh, very uh, appreciative. Brilliant. Well, enjoy the rest of the experience, everybody. Yeah, oh, yes, the rest of the yeah. festival. Okay. <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.